In India's snowy far north, an unlikely team of athletes is desperately trying to put their sport on the map. India's ice hockey team may be a ragtag group without fame or fortune. But with great passion and second-hand equipment, they dream of playing on the world stage. I'm Steve Chow. On this episode, 101 East travels to Ladakh, where for some, winter just can't come soon enough. In Ladakh, winter is as brutal as it is breathtaking. Temperatures plummet to minus 20 degrees. And water pipes freeze across the valley. For months, this remote region is cut off by snow. here longing for spring. But there are some who have been waiting all year for the big chill. Young men, winter means ice hockey, and their otherwise sleepy town of Leh is buzzing with fast and furious games. The craze for the sport here is legendary. Many brave sub-zero temperatures to watch local tournaments. Even players from Canada and America travel here to compete. They skate on frozen ponds at a head-spinning altitude of 3,500 meters, struggling for every breath. Ice hockey in Ladakh is unique to the world. Uh, it is among the highest altitude hockey games you can possibly play. You have no air. You're suffocating while exerting. Few people, even in India, are aware of Ladakh's hockey obsession. But American Adam Sherlip has been coming here for many years after hearing about the phenomenon. He's a self-confessed hockey fanatic who's been playing since he was a child. He has even worked for the U.S. National Hockey League. My first trip here, I took a little video of a kid on this rink playing with a rock and just a bent stick. And that was him just playing hockey because he loved it. And that's what it's all about. And I've seen goalies using pillows. Uh, I mean, they'll, they'll use cricket equipment. They use anything they could. Oh, nice drop pass. Then in 2009, he volunteered to coach India's ice hockey team. That's right, India has a national team. I never thought I was going to be coaching ice hockey in India. I never thought I'd be the coach of Team India. I never thought that India would be such an important part of my life. Uh, on the ice, I have to work very hard for that. Adam is currently putting together this year's squad. And 23-year-old Sewan Geltsen is desperate to make the cut. He has been in the team for the past three years. But this year, like every year, there's no guarantees. How do you feel about this season? Uh, good. I mean, uh, I'm expecting lots of younger guys. Playing for the national team is the main goal for me. I'm trying, you know, I'm trying my level best to do, you know, more uh, towards ice hockey, to improve my game, to improve uh, everything, you know, related to ice hockey. 
the sport is more than just a hobby for Gelson. It's his life. When he plays, he says he's in a different world. When I'm on the ice, I feel more lighter, I feel more faster. Uh, I, f I feel like flying all the time on the skates. I feel strong. It gives me just more than a human feeling, you know. I'm somewhat near to the, some superhero, you know. When uh, we put on our skates and uh, when we put on our gear and, and we jump into the ice, uh, we, we have no idea about what's going on outside. Nothing comes to our mind about what's going on outside the, uh, outside the rink in the world or what I'm going to do next and what I have done before. It's just a bunch of players. Uh, alongside me and the oppo opposition out there. For as long as Gelson can remember, he has dreamt of playing in the big league. He and his teammates have been working hard to get in shape before the national tryouts, but it's not easy. That's why she will bring Gelson. Most of the players' equipment is donated and second-hand. A lot of it is damaged and they can't afford to replace it. I have this uh, gloves, I think. I got it two years back and when I got it, it was in a very bad condition and now it has got really worse now. Um, almost most of the gears, you know, are either a little too big for me or a little too small for me. If we don't have appropriate uh, equipment, then uh, we are less protected and we become more prone to the injuries. It also doesn't help that the players have no full-sized rink to play on. There's only one of those in all of India, in the city of Dehradun, which is a two-day drive away. And even that has been shut since 2012 because of a lack of funds. Instead, Gelson and his friends only have a few weeks of winter to practice on ice when the lakes freeze. <laughs> For these elite athletes, this lack of equipment and infrastructure is disastrous. Gelson says it's his family's support that keeps him going. He has invited me home for lunch to meet them. Hello. 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 How are you? How are you? My aunt. Gelson's mother has been a school teacher for more than 40 years. Over plates of fresh momos, she talks about her son's passion for ice hockey. When he was young, his father was a member of the Winter Sports Club, and he used to go along and play ice hockey. But I never expected him to be this good. Sometimes he gets hurt on his legs, on his chin, on his chest. He won't tell me. It's only when he's in severe pain that we go to the hospital. He loves the game that much. Gelson has just finished a degree in engineering, so it's not long before the discussion turns to his future. His father passed away two years ago, and since then, his uncles have helped support the family. Gelson's father always supported his dream of playing ice hockey. He was a decorated police officer, even serving with the Dalai Lama. But his sudden death from a heart attack threw the family 
into turmoil. He used to say that even though we don't have a lot of money, we can borrow from other people so he can go overseas to play ice hockey. He supported him so that he could become something. As the eldest son, responsibility now falls on Geltsin. But playing for India's ice hockey team pays nothing. In fact, he has spent thousands of dollars traveling to international tournaments to represent his country. This money we need to borrow from others, and that's how we've been managing. When I get my salary, I pay them back. It's a burden that is increasingly weighing on Geltsin. I have to take care of my family. I have to think about so many things which I don't have the habit of thinking because since when he was there, he always he had that, uh, that responsibility to look after everyone. Uh, this one thing he always used to say, like, even though I didn't get to travel abroad, but you were getting to travel abroad so many times. I'm happy for that. <laughs> I didn't want this, I mean. Without his father's support, Geltsin is now facing the difficult choice between following his childhood dreams and fulfilling his responsibilities as an adult. It's really confusing sometimes, you know, I get lost, I get confused and uh, I cry a lot alone. Uh, and I try to be strong, strong, but I know myself I'm not that strong, you know, I cry a lot. For now, Geltsin is trying to focus on hockey. He needs to qualify for the national team. He says it's what his father would want. I think every son, you know, wants to make their uh, parents proud. And I'm just, a, I'm just one of them, you know, who's trying to become like the person, you know, who always uh, was like a role model to me. The national tryouts are getting closer, and today, Geltsin is playing a crucial game. His local team is competing for a tournament trophy, and his performance needs to be impressive. Apart from being hugely popular, these local tournaments are important because they help coaches pick the national team every year. So winning is everything. Before the game, the team discuss strategy. At first, their plan seems to be working. But soon, their opposition, wearing red and white, begin to overpower them. Again and again, Gelton and his teammates are missing important shots, and their goalie has had enough. The game is painful to watch and ultimately Geltsin's team lose three goals to one. Nah, I'm really pissed off right now because uh, we didn't play well. And uh... Given today's result, Geltsin is now worried about his place in the national team. 
our team, we didn't even reach the semi-finals whole season. So that might affect uh, the selection committee to, you know, get a minus point on that. With only a few days before the tryouts, he and his mother make an appointment with his physiotherapist. A recurring groin injury has been bothering Geltsin. Injuries are common for ice hockey players, and Geltsin has had some painful trips to the hospital. Each time, his mother breaks down. When I cry in front of him, he says, don't cry. I'm not in that much pain. Then I have to go somewhere else and cry. I feel so awful. Who else am I living for? I'm only living for him. To avoid upsetting his mother, Geltsin often covers up his injuries. Sometimes I, I, I feel really disturbed that, you know, what, what might happen. Am I going to be disabled or things like that, you know? But the most important thing is that I'm concerned whether I'm, I'll be able to play the next game. It's the day before the national tryouts and Harjinder Singh from India's Ice Hockey Association has called a meeting with coach Adam Sherlip and some players. Hi Adam, how are you? How are you? How are you, Gelson? He has a short list of names for the trials. Lundup Namgel, 66 Jigmit Angchok. He's not here. Okay, uh, 88 Rigzen Nurbu, Sevang Galson, 7 Sevang Dorje, 16. Gelson's name is called out, but he still needs to qualify to make the squad. Don't come with an assumption that you deserve a spot because that will ultimately res result in you not making the team. The other big announcement is from Adam. After seven years, he is handing over to a new Canadian coach, but he has some parting words and he doesn't hold back. One of the things that I've found over the years is when things get tough, Team India plays worse across the board. When it's difficult, we collapse. And that is not about skill, that is about character. That is about work ethic. You make a mistake, you want to go out there, you want to play even better. And that is not the identity of Team India yet. Yeah, most of them, they have the same question. Like For the players, it's a hard fact they must accept. They've been competing internationally since 2009, and so far, they've only won a single game against Macau four years ago. You play to win, and if you don't do it after a long period of time, you get used to losing. And the character of players that are used to losing is very different from the character of players that are used to winning. This year, the team will travel to Kyrgyzstan to compete in the Challenge Cup of Asia, and the pressure is on for them to perform. Kyrgyzstan ke andar hamara position aana bahut zaroori hai. Uske do reasons hai. Ek to we get to participate in Asian Games, Winter Games. Secondly, Indian government always gives financial support for Olympic Games and Asian Games. Please understand. Money is a constant concern for the association. Right now, they don't even have enough to send the players to Kyrgyzstan. As last time, crowdfunding sponsors And if that's not enough, the players will have to pitch in. It's an expense that some can't afford. It's a vicious cycle that they're caught in. Without government support, they can't develop their skills and win tournaments. 
But until they win tournaments, the government won't support them. The reality is India doesn't get behind a team that they know is going to lose. They want to get behind the team that will make them proud. After weeks of anticipation, the day of the tryouts is finally here. More than 50 players are competing for just 22 positions. I expect you all to skate hard today. Because if you don't, you don't make the team. For Geltsin, it's his last chance to prove himself. Some of you guys know this drill. We've done it many times. We'll start in the corners. You get a pass from defense. The defense skates around the circle, plays against the other player. None of the one hands garbage. Use two hands. That's why you have them. Come on, get in there. It's as simple as two or three bad passes can make the difference between cut or not cut today. I see a lot of you doing this. Adam, how are the trials going? They're okay. There's a lot of players who uh, aren't skating so well right now. But Gelson's hard work seems to be paying off. Gelson's doing pretty well. Uh, he's skating harder than I've seen him skate in the past. He's, he's got a little bit uh, more proficiency in his footwork. After weeks of struggle, he is finally hitting his stride on the ice. But will it be enough to qualify for Team India? While he waits to find out, Gelson's mother takes him to a Buddhist monastery to pray. Her only wish is for her son to be safe and happy. He needs to go all the way in ice hockey and become a professional player. He shouldn't give up in the middle because his dream will be unfulfilled. He should show the world that he's a real ice hockey player. Despite his many hardships, Gelson says he's lucky. At such a young age, he has found his true passion. He only wants the chance to pursue it. You know, I've given so much for this sport that, and only I know that feeling, you know, what I have given up and how much I have sacrificed for this sport. From this tiny corner of India, Gelson has big dreams for his sport and his country. I'm, I'm really proud that I, I am the part of this history and I'll try my best, level best that Ice Hockey India will reach that heights, you know, which I have dreamt about from so many years. Maybe right now it's not so famous, but in coming future, in next few generations, India, you know, who knows, it might represent in the world, level, world championship level or maybe in the Winter Olympics. Those hopes may not be realized soon. But the passion that Gelson and his teammates have ignited in this remote town will live on for generations.